Hey, what's up everybody? Molten Mage here, and this is the Battle for Azeroth Mount Guide Part 1. For every mount in this video, I have provided coordinates of each of their locations and timestamps for each specific mount in the video description down below. First are the yellow, blue, and green marsh hoppers. To get these mounts, you must purchase them for 3,333 gold from the vendor Gotham, located here in Nazmir. Next is the Pale Hide Direhorn. To get this mount, you must purchase it for 500,000 gold from the vendor Talutu on the Horde side, located here in Dazar Lore, and the Alliance vendor Tricky Nick, located here in Borlas. Next are the achievement mounts. You get the Conqueror Scythe Maw from completing the Conqueror of Azeroth achievement. You get the Obsidian Crow Lust from completing the Glory of the War Torn Hero achievement. You get the Blood Gorge Krog from completing the Glory of the Old Deer Raider achievement. And you get the The Zaralore Windweaver from completing the Glory of the The Zaralore Raider achievement. I've been getting requests to create videos on how to complete the specific achievements for all the achievement mounts, so I'll be creating videos explaining how to complete the specific achievements for the mounts at a later time. Next is Kufan. This mount can only be obtained on a Horde character, but it can also be mounted by both Horde and Alliance once you earn it on your Horde tomb. To get this mount, you must first get this rare egg. The egg has a very low chance to drop from these mobs listed here. The best spot to farm this egg is from this area of Dazar Lore. Keep farming this area until you get the egg. Once you have the egg, you need to bring it to this location here in Zandalar and turn it into Paku. When you turn it into Paku, this will get you started on a 29 day daily quest chain that you will need to complete. Upon completion, you will be rewarded with the mount. Next are the Ruby Shell Crowlusk and Bloodthirsty Dreadwing for Horde, and the Azure Shell Crowlusk and Priestess Moonsaber for Alliance. To get the mounts for your respective faction, you need to save up a total of 950 Honor Bound Service Medals or 7th Legion Service Medals. The way to earn Service Medals is to complete the world quests that are up in the Active Warfront. The portals to get into an Active Warfront are located here in Jazar Lore and located here in Borlas. Another way you can earn service medals are by doing the Warfront scenarios, but it will require you to have a minimum of 10 people in a raid group before you will be able to enter one, and your faction on your server will need to complete the contributions needed to activate this scenario. To do that, complete the daily quests that are available in the general area of the Warfront table. The final way to earn service medals is by earning Paragon Reputation Boxes with either the Honor Bound or 7th Legion, as these Paragon Boxes will reward 20 service medals. Once you have enough service medals, you can purchase the mounts from Provisioner Morak on Horde side and Quartermaster Stoutforge on Alliance side. Next are the Horde Allied Race mounts that were released on or before patch 8.1, which include the High Mountain Thunderhoof, Nightborn Mana Saber, Maghar Direwolf, and Zandalari Direhorn. Unlocking the mounts are the same requirements as unlocking the Allied Races. You will have to complete the prerequisite quest achievements before you can do the quest change required for each one. For the High Mountain Thunderhoof, you will need to complete the Ain't No Mountain High Enough questline. For the Nightborn Mana Saber, you will need to complete the Insurrection questline. For the Maghar Direwolf, you will need to complete the Ready for War questline. And for the Zandalari Direhorn, it will require that you complete both Zandalar Forever and Tides of Vengeance questlines. After you have completed the prerequisite questline for the specific allied race mount you are targeting, you will need to head to the Horde Embassy located here in Ogamar. Once there, you can speak to G Firepaw, who will give that specific allied race's mount starting quest, which will get you started on a quest line that you will need to complete. Once you complete that quest line, you will unlock the allied race and mount. Next are the Alliance allied race mounts that were released on or before patch 8.1, which include the Starkers Void Strider, Lightforge Fellcrusher, Dark Iron Corehound, and Kaltirian Charger. Unlocking the mounts are the same requirements as unlocking the allied races. You will have to complete the prerequisite quest achievements before you can do the quest chains required for each one. For the Starker's Forge Strider and Lightforge Fellcrusher, you will need to complete the You Are Now Prepared questline. For the Dark Iron Corehound, you will need to complete the Ready for War questline. And for the Coltier and Charger, it will require that you complete both Tides of Vengeance and a Nation United questlines. After you have completed the prerequisite questline for the specific allied race mount you are targeting, you will need to head to the Alliance Embassy located here in Stormwind. Once there, you can speak to Asaya Cloudsinger, who will give you that specific allied race's mount starting quest, which will get you started on a quest line that you will need to complete. Once you complete that quest line, you will unlock the allied race and mount. Next are the Cobalt and Spectral Terra Wings. 
To get these mountains, you must become exalted with the Zandalari Empire. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Zandalar story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to the Zandalari Empire Emissary located here in the Great Seal in Zandalar and purchase the mounts for gold. Next are the Expedition Bloodswarmer and Captured Swampstalker. To get these mounts, you must become exalted with Talanji's Expedition. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Nazmir story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to Talanji's Expedition Emissary located here in Nazmir and purchase the mounts for gold. Next are the Alabaster Hyena and Valdunai Dune Scrapper. To get these mounts, you must become exalted with the Valdunai. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Valdun story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to the Valdunai Emissary located here in Valdun and purchase the mounts for gold. Next are the Admiralty Stallion and Proudmoor Sea Scout. To get these mounts, you must become exalted with the Pradmore Admiralty. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Terragard Sound story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to the Pradmore Admiralty Emissary located here in Borlas and purchase the mounts for gold. Next are the Dapple Grey and Stormsong Coast Watcher. To get these mounts, you must become exalted with the Storm's Wake. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Stormsong Valley story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to the Storm's Wake's emissary located here in Stormsong Valley and purchase the mounts for gold. Next are the Smoky Charger and Waycrest Griffin. To get these mounts, you must become exalted with the Order of the Embers. The best way to get exalted is to complete the Drusfar story questline and then farm the daily world quests that come up in the zone. Once exalted, speak to the Order of the Embers Emissary located here in Drusfar and purchase the mounts for gold. Next is the Hive Mind Mount. This mount is obtained by completing a series of riddles. It would take too long to explain how to get this mount for this guide, so I'll be making a specific guide on how to obtain the Hive Mind Mount with all the specific steps at a later time. Next is the Leaping Vein Seeker. You have two ways of getting this mount. The first way is by buying it off the auction house. The second way is by farming these mobs that are scattered across Nazmir. They all have a very low chance to drop them out. The best location to farm for this mount is this area of Nazmir. Next is the Dune Scavenger. You have two ways of getting this mount. The first way is by buying it off the auction house. The second way is by farming these mobs that are scattered across Vol Dune. They all have a very low chance to drop them out. The best location to farm for this mount is this area of Vol Dune. Next is the Terrified Pack Mule. You can get this mount by either buying it off the auction house or by farming these mobs that are scattered across Drusfar. They all have a very low chance to drop the mount. The best location to farm for this mount is this area of Drusfar. Next is the Golden Mane. You can get this mount by either buying it off the auction house or by farming it from these mobs that are scattered across Stormsong Valley. They all have a very low chance to drop the mount. The best location to farm for this mount is this area of Stormsong Valley. Next is the Najatar Blood Serpent. To get this mount, you will first need to get 20 Abyssal Fragments. To get these fragments, you either purchase it off the auction house, or the best place to farm them is this cave in Stormsong Valley. On average, you will get about 2 Abyssal Fragments per hour from this farm. After you get the 20 Abyssal Fragments, you will need to head to the Altar of the Abyss, which is located here in this cave in Stormsong. At the back of the cave, you will find the Altar. Once you get to that altar, click on the Abyssal Fragments and it will become the Abhorrent Essence of the Abyss. After you get that item, head to the Abyssal Flame which is located at this mine in Stormsong Valley. When you offer the Essence to the Abyssal Flame, it will summon an Elite that you will need to kill. If you kill this Elite in a group, only the person who summons the Elite will get them out. After you kill the Elite, you will be able to loot the Najatar Blood Serpent. Next is the Frightened Kodo. This mount has a chance to spawn at these spawn locations in the present version of Darkshore. It has approximately a 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer. The Warfront status has no effect on whether it spawns. This mount has a 100% chance to spawn after a hard or soft server reset. As of Shadowlands, this mount is no longer lootable by a trial character. Once the Kodo spawns, he will immediately start running around to the different spawn points. The best strategy of obtaining this mount is to have one of your characters sit at one of the spawn points. Then after a server reset, see if it spawns at your spawn location. If not, fly around to the different spawn points. If you do not see him after 2 minutes, either someone else has clicked on him first, or it has despawned. If you find him, make sure to click on him and finish the cast. 
Then the coda will end up in your bags. Next is Blackpaw. To get this mount, you need to have the Darkshore Warfront be active for your faction. You will then need to head to this location in Darkshore. When the Horde has the active Warfront, you will need to kill the rare Blackpaw. When the Alliance has the active Warfront, you will need to kill the rare Agatha Wormwood. They both will have a 4% chance to drop them out. Next is the Umber Nightsaber. To get this mount, you need to have the Darkshore Warfront be active for your faction. When the Horde has the active Warfront, you will need to head to this location and kill the rare Athol Dewfire. When the Alliance has the active Warfront, you will need to head to this location and kill the rare Moxo the Beheader. They both will have a 5% chance to drop them out. Next is the Kaldora Nightsaber. To get this mount, you need to have the Darkshore Warfront be active for your faction. When the Horde has the active Warfront, you need to head to this location and kill the rare Shadowclaw. When the Alliance has the active Warfront, you'll need to head to this location and kill the rare Kraw's Blood Rage. They both will have about a 5% chance to drop them out. Next is the Ashenville Chimera. To get this mount, you can have either faction have the Darkshore Warfront active. You then will need to head to this location and kill the rare Alasha Nier. He will have about a 5% chance to drop them out. Next is the Swift Albino Raptor. To get this mount, you can have either faction have the Arathia Basin Warfront active. You then will need to head to this location and kill the rare Beast Rider Kama. He will have about a 5% chance to drop them out. Next is Skull Ripper. To get this mount, you can have either faction have the Arathia Basin Warfront active. You then will need to head to this location and kill the rare Skull Ripper. She will have about a 6% chance to drop them out. Next is Lil Donkey. To get this mount, you can have either faction have the Arathi Basin Warfront active. You then will need to head to this location and kill the rare Overseer Crix. He will have about a 6% chance to drop them out. Next is the Broken Highland Mustang for Horde and the Highland Mustang for Alliance. To get these mounts, you need to have the Arathi Basin Warfront be active for your faction. When the Horde has the active Warfront, you need to head to this location and kill Night Captain Aldrin. When the Alliance has the active Warfront, you need to head to this location and kill Doom Rider Hellgrim. They both have about a 7% chance to drop them out. Next will be the mounts you can obtain from Island Expeditions. You can get them on any difficulty. You can queue up for Island Expeditions at the Expedition map locations for your faction. Horde will need to go to this location in Dazar Lore and Alliance in this location in Borlas. You can also get these mounts from Salvage Loot Boxes which have a higher chance of dropping the mounts and can be bought with doubloons. Doubloons are a currency you earn from island expeditions. To purchase the salvage loot boxes, you will need to speak to your faction's high sea salvage expert. Now I am going to show a preview of each of the mounts, what mob types have the potential to reward you the mount with the loot upon completion of an island expedition, and what salvage loot box potentially drops them. First are the Slitwing Albatross and Saltwater Seahorse. You can purchase them for doubloons from your faction's doubloon trader. Next is the Twilight Avenger. You will need to kill Twilight Dragon mobs or purchase the Jorndal, Rotting, Crestfall, or Verdant Salvage boxes. Next is the Blood Gorge Hunter. You will need to kill Bat mobs or purchase any of the Salvage boxes. Next is the Island Thunderscale. You will need to kill Storm Dragon mobs or purchase the Jorndal, Rotting, or Crestfall Salvage boxes. Next is the Risen Mare. You will need to kill Necromancer mobs or purchase the Haven's Wood Salvage box. Next is the Stonehide Elderhorn. You will need to kill Elderhorn mobs or purchase any of the salvage boxes. Next is the Surf Jelly. You will need to kill Murloc, Naga, or Sorak mobs or purchase any of the salvage loot boxes. Next is the Craghorn Chasm Leaper. You will need to kill Craghorn Yeti mobs or purchase any of the salvage boxes. Next is Quinchos Eternal Hound. You will need to kill Mogu mobs or purchase the Dreadchain, Snow Blossom, or Ungol Ruin salvage boxes. Lastly is Squawks. You would need to kill pirate mobs or purchase the Rotting Mire, Crestfall, or Jorindal Savage boxes. Next is the Underrot Krog. You would need to go to the dungeon The Underrot located here in Nazmir. Set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty and kill the last boss, Unbound Abomination. He will have a very low chance to drop them out. Next is Tombstalker. You would need to go to the dungeon King's Rest located here in Zoldazar. Set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty and kill the last boss, King Dazar. He will have a very low chance to drop them out. Next is Sharkbait. You will need to go to the Dungeon Freehold located here in Terragard Sound. Set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty and kill the last boss Harlan Sweet. He will have a very low chance to drop them out. Next are the Gmod and Glacial Tidestorm mounts. To get these mounts you need to go to the Battle of Dazar Lore Raid 
with the Horde entrance being located here in Zoldazar and the Alliance entrance being located here in Borlas. For Gmod, you can set the raid on any difficulty and will need to kill the boss High Tinker Mechatork. Unless you are doing this raid on LFR difficulty, and if so, you'll need to kill the last boss, Jaina Proudmoore. For the Glacial Tidestorm, you'll need to set this raid to Mythic difficulty and kill the last boss, Jaina Proudmoore. She will have a low chance to drop them out. And those are all the mounts in this guide. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I also like to stream on Twitch. I like to host RBGs, raids, and Mythic Plus dungeons on there. If you would like to come check out my stream, I have provided a link to my Twitch down below. Goodbye everybody!